Good morning, folks. We've got several items for you today. We'll look at some eye candy on eclipse paths, last month's temperatures in the U.S., a lonely galaxy, how space energy impacts the weather, and we're starting, as always, with our star. The last 24 hours was another quiet one. All the active sunspots are on the far side of the sun. Only coronal hole is relatively small, and we can expect those active sunspots to turn back around to face Earth in about a week. The solar wind and geomagnetic conditions are very quiet, too. And here's one of the eruptions we did have, went off the far side, visible by SOHO here. Now the primary eruptive focus is the plasma filaments. They have remained pretty stable for a while, but this one incoming is part of a larger complex we'll need to monitor, one of the largest prominences of the solar cycle so far. Hello, big guy. Been nice to have seismic activity calm down as the sun does as well, but I'm watching several blood echoes ring South America, and we'll be eyeing that region for continued activity in the days ahead. Many of you know the USA has back-to-back -back eclipses this year and next year. Here are their paths. Primary visibility as they occur over the U.S. in October and then in April of next year. U.S. climate report is out for February, and it was a perfect split down the middle of the country. I don't mind telling you that I did not enjoy the colder phase here in Colorado, but the jets are shifting. It'll be in the 60s today while snowstorms are set to return to the northeast. Pretty awesome multispectral view of 3C297 here. After optical light showed the region to be oddly sparse, the infrared, radio, and X-ray views were added by other scopes and satellites to reveal the cosmic jet and the evidence in hot gas of the central region having eaten its surroundings. It's what our eyes can't see that reveals the truth of the cosmos. Our top story today shows why there has been such disagreement about cosmic rays and the solar impact on global cloud cover. Turns out, if you segregate the latitudes and regional impacts, the correlations become very clear. This cloud forcing is profoundly impactful because it not only impacts precipitation and storms, but determines how much sunlight hits the surface versus is reflected by the clouds, which is a primary control on global temperature marks. Don't forget, our e-magazine will be out in about a week. Sign up now at the link below the video. Get a complete rundown of the top stories for the past month and where they fit in the larger perspective. Also check out our other links. Tons of cool stuff in the new store, including things geared specifically for the observer mindset. We greatly appreciate your support. Again, all those links are down below the video. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 5.30 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.